Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming to this event. In 2009, when we started Voices from Oxford from scratch, I've never imagined that we would have virtual reality film crew, Yonam News Agency, and the real eyes here today from Korea. Francis Kencross, the then uh, rector of Exeter College, was the first interviewee. And then Professor David Vines, they agreed to be interviewed without any questions. That was a very, very good start. And then after that, we approached many distinguished scholars, professors, global leaders, and the students. All this wouldn't have happened without Sir Roman Bone, the master of Baylor College. He has given us enormous support together with Baylor College. Well, we have a, a stellar lineup of, of speakers today to give us the first of the tea talks this evening at Sir Drummond on inspiring people with poetry. Thank you for asking me to speak at uh, Tea Talks, uh, Sungi Kim. Language, music, mathematics, all depend on our recognition of patterns. So I'm thinking, how could I talk about the development of China, the rise of China, which can give you a little bit fresh air? Then I decide to talk about China from an ordinary people's viewpoint how people like us perceive the rise of China. We all know where we were when Brexit happened. Brexit became the common language during my time in Korea last summer. It was a shame, but that is how the world works. This common language seemed to unite people from East and West. Regardless of one's opinions, it served as a ground to which people from across the world could interact. The only reason I made Ladies in Lavender was because my mother told me when she hit 85 that of the films that she had seen that I had been involved in, she didn't like any of them. And it just happened to bump into an actor called Charles Dance in Berwick Street Market who told me I've got a story about two old women and one of them falls in love with a guy who's washed up from the sea, which would not normally have interested me. Oh, my mum's going to love this. And I'm quite a big Catholic family. You know, I want to be in the will. <laughs> I think a lot of people lose opportunities, not because they don't see them, not because they don't know their opportunities, but simply they don't move quick enough to take advantage of that opportunity. And, and it's there at one moment and gone the next. I mean, I'm going to have a short um, discussion, panel discussion, just about some of the ideas that we have been discussing and if you do have any questions do feel free to raise your hand. Just a question about uh, technology. You, you know people say the technology like internet and the mobile phone changed the world but recently you know AlphaGo beat the world champion. <laughs> do you believe the, the machine with uh, artificial intelligence will, will be able to compete with people? It's not my expert area, but, but clearly machines are already better than people at many jobs that were previously done by human beings. And there's no reason why that shouldn't continue to progress. So I'm wondering whether within your field you have, you have encountered such situations where you've seen software done, do things to make you wonder but how long will it take until um, it will be so creative, like not even... Um, even artists will have to fight to sort of be at par with the software. Music software that is creative and can produce um, excellent compositions, that's fantastic. But for me, it's, there's still the whole experience of sitting, um, if I were a composer, sitting with a pencil and a piece of paper and trying to devise what a potential work of art, a potential musical masterpiece to be performed by a renowned orchestra or a renowned choir. Be. I'd like to suggest that we adapt through being more creative in the way in which 
schools and universities approach education, it's clear that we should be educating people to be prepared for rapid change. And I think that means, amongst other things, that it should be less rote learning, less learning of facts, and more learning of how to think. Well, it won't surprise you to, to hear that. I mean, I think East-West collaboration is absolutely crucial, and that's why we, uh, we set up uh, Sian Jiatong Liverpool University. And, and we made a very deliberate choice when we did that. Um, quite a, a, a few other British universities set up campuses of the home university overseas. So they transplanted the British university to China or to Malaysia. And we said, no, we're not going to do that. That's pointless. Now, what we want to do is actually combine a British university with a Chinese university and create what in China is called a strong, strong partnership. But the key thing is that that university works in both, in both cultures. Uh, and you can get a degree in China, which is a Chinese degree, or you can uh, get a degree back in, in Liverpool. And I think that's, that's very important. Uh, it's, it's real collaboration. It's not simply transplanting one culture. Thank you very much, everybody.